Welcome to Kingdom Warriors. I want to share with you um, on the topic of divine discipleship versus random living. Divine discipleship versus random living. Now in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7, I'm reading from the, uh, the Living Bible. Noah was another who trusted God. When he heard God's warning about the future, Noah built him even though there was then no sign of a flood. And wasting no time, he built the ark and saved his family. Noah's belief in God was in direct contrast to the sin and disbelief of the rest of the world, which refused to obey. And because of his faith, he became one of those whom God had accepted. So what distinguishes a disciple from a big crowd is his sensitivity to his creator, his fellowship with and his walk of obedience to his master. So what distinguishes you and I as a disciple from a big crowd is that we are sensitive to the voice of our creator that we have fellowship with our master and then we walk being obedient to our Lord. So he is not a spiritual orphan, not a loner, not a struggling aggressive survivor, but a distinguished, tuned in and a called out one, marked with sonship, marked with purpose and mission, being cared for, guided and provided for. So that's you and I being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. We live by divine discipleship. We don't have a random living. So it was not Noah's personality nor his accomplishments, but his calling which is vibrant, active, and burning in his heart and his soul. It was that, it was that um, calling which was vibrant, active, and burning in his heart and soul. It was that, that passion, that calling that distinguished him from the rest of the crowd. He had a calling which is much greater than mortality, there was an attraction in him towards God, which was higher than human aspirations. His calling from God was energizing and moving him on to nobility, honor, and higher heavens. Noah was not trying to be different. No, he was not trying to be different. He was different. He was not impressing anyone with his holiness and righteousness. No, it was the attraction of heaven that was calling, drawing, and pulling him away from a common, lustful lifestyle to a righteousness, God-directed life, to a righteous, God-directed life. Amen. Amen. Heaven was calling Noah away from the world around him. Noah chose to be God-directed rather than self-directed. He chose to live a heavenly rather than a worldly life. We need to understand that the inward movement, the inward movement that's in a disciple, did not come from... Um, that's in Noah and in every one of us. So the inward movement in a disciple does not come from human persuasions, nor from a soulish ambition. It's from the image, it's from the vision that God has put on the inside of every man born on this planet Earth. It's the, it's the vision, it's the image that we have inherited from the first man, from Adam. Ever since mankind was created by God, amen. Remember, mankind did not evolve from beasts. 
The devil tried to murder and bury that God DNA, that godly spirit, that righteous force in every man. But he could never succeed without the man cooperating with him. The godly DNA is inherent and alive in every person born on the planet Earth. It just needs to be activated to connect with the Father of all spirits, the source of all goodness, the source of all heaven's power. Amen? That, that human spirit that has fallen just has to be connected with God again. And once that connection is made, then his or her spirit gets lit up and it shines in the midst of darkness, no matter how dark it is. And God from heaven will say, yes, this is my man or this is my woman. Amen. A person could be religiously or selfishly attending church, even serving, but not born again. His or her spirit is not ignited, and that's, for not, and that's why not connected with God, who is the source of all and eternal goodness and benefits. So if that's the case, if the spirit is not connected with God or to God, then there is the abs absence of an upward or heavenly movement within him or her. And that's why Jesus said, by their fruit, you will know them. Because it's that upward heavenly movement that makes a godly man or a godly woman. That's what distinguishes him or her. Now, reading from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 in the Living Bible, Abram trusted God. And when God told him to leave home and go far away to another land that he promised to give him, Abraham obeyed. Away he went, not even knowing where he was going. And verse 10, Abraham did this because he was confidently waiting for God to bring him to that strong heavenly city whose designer and builder is God. Well, you notice that Abraham did not live a random life. He was so sure of God's voice. He was so sure that God was leading him. And he was so sure that God was leading him to a much better place. Amen. Even though he did not say it in the natural. Life is random if one does not have a master. He or she can do whatever he or she wants. Because he or she is not a disciple. Not a guided one and not a trained heir. Eyes are made to see, ears are made to hear, hands are made to work, legs to walk. Everything in the human body is purpose-built. Some people spend their whole life looking for God, finding his calling. Some spend his many years striving for fame and fortune, the love of men or the fulfillment of self yet not tuned into the master's voice, so forever searching and not believing, forever crying out and not listening. Abraham heard, look at Abraham, he heard, he trusted and he obeyed. It sounds so simple, so automatic. Well, hearing is built within the human body. We are born and we are wired to hear. It's not a learned skill. If physically it is so, then how much more spiritually? So it's not whether one can hear God or not, but whether one wants to, pays attention to, whether one is tuned into God's soft and gentle voice. Remember, Cain heard God even after he had killed Abel. So hearing God is a matter of priority. It's the life of a disciple. Discerning the voice, the leading of God, is a matter of the heart. The authentic, the disciple, can discern the real from the fake. For there's always a perceivable, marked difference between the real, the genuine, and the fake. 
Yet, of course, it is hard for those who are fake, lukewarm, compromising, worldly, and carnal. So that's why there is there is a sanctification to protect us, that we can discern, amen, the authentic from the fake. If you read Hebrews chapter eleven, verse eleven and twelve, Sarah. Too had faith, and because of this, she was able to become a mother in spite of her old age, for she realized that God, who gave her His promise, would certainly do what He said. And so, a whole nation came from Abraham, who was too old to even have one child, a nation with so many millions of people. That, like the stars of the sky, the sand on the on the ocean shores. There's no way to count them. So if we look at Sarah, we know that a saint is not a perfect and qualified spiritual achiever. No, a saint is simply a born again person, a born again one who lives for the Holy God. It's the indwelling and the activities of the Holy Spirit, His leading. His corrections and inspirations that make a person to separate himself or herself from evil, and to yield to what is holy and righteous. Sarah is a common, average lady with her human weakness and flaws, yet God distinguishes her as a great woman of faith. She is marked by God for her willingness. Her choice to hold on to the promises of God, Amen. God's promises to her personally. So we've noticed that Noah, Abraham, and Sarah—they all share one common characteristic. What's that? They were disciples who followed God, God's promise, leading, instructions, and corrections. They follow them time after time, in spite of failures, in spite of weaknesses. They did not live a random life. They did not do whatever you know was necessary at the time. You know what the crowd was doing at the time,、uh, was the trend、um, of of the generation. No. No, they did not do whatever was best for survival or for comfortable living or for acceptance. They followed God's plan, instructions for them, with perseverance and resilience. They lived for and lived out God's plan for their lives. God's vision became their personal vision, and they shined. Forever and ever, because of it. For them, it's a life well planned by God, and well lived by them, marked as excellent in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. Let's follow them. Let's learn from them, and our lives will be excellent as well. In the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven, God bless you, Amen.